Hello, welcome back. This video is going to look at discontinuities causing the integral to be improper. My name is Nakai Rimmer and I'm here to help you through this journey. So I'm going to hopefully explain this to you um, in two examples. And then we'll have another video with two more examples. That way the video is not too long. So we're talking about being improper, not because of an infinite limit of integration, but being improper because of a place where the function that you're integrating is undefined at. It could be the lower limit that it's undefined at. It could be the upper limit that it's undefined at. It could also be some place in between. And so we're going to take a look at all these examples. In, in this particular video, we look at the lower limit being the infinite discontinuity. And then we'll look at the upper limit being the infinite discontinuity. Okay, great. So what you do in this case is you have to do a limit, just like in the other cases when, when infinity is a bound, but you have to identify where the function is undefined at. Mostly it's going to be by looking at the denominator and setting it equal to zero. Okay. And you have this interval that you're integrating over from A to B. And so technically when you're doing the limit, as you're approaching, let's say the lower limit is the place that's giving you the discontinuity. Technically, it's only a one sided limit. You are approaching that lower limit only from the right hand side. You don't care what's going on from numbers that are smaller than it. They don't matter at all to you. So as a technicality, I have it here in red. I don't know if you can see it in the superscript position in the exponent position. We put a plus sign to signify that it's a right hand limit. OK, all right. So here's our example root x is in the denominator from here on out we focus our attention on the denominator and we try to figure out where the denominator is zero at what kind of x causes the denominator to be zero and for us for this one it's when x is equal to zero and now I'll take a look at the lower limit and there it is zero is the lower limit the upper limit is nine so f of zero causes an infinite discontinuity or the function evaluated at zero you can't do it the function is that's not even in the domain yet. We're still going to integrate this. How rip out the zero, put in a variable, let that variable approach zero from the right hand side. Do your antiderivative. So this is X to the negative one half. So we have X to the one half times two. And let's just call it two root X. It's better because it'll be easier to figure out what's going on. Fundamental theorem of calculus, put a 9 in and we put a t in. The 9 is going to give us a constant. Root of 9 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. That part is a constant. It's the lower limit. When we put the t in, we get minus 2 root t. So we focus on that part. What happens as t goes to 0? And of course, it has to be from the right-hand side because it's a square root. You can't have negative numbers underneath the square root. So as a technicality, if you just wrote limit as t goes to zero, that means from both sides. And that's not what we can have here. OK, that's not what we're interested in, in this question. But yeah, you approach zero from smaller numbers like one over a billion. You take a square root. It's going to be really small. Two times something very small It's still small. It's going to go to zero. Um, I thought I had the limit written out, but yeah, that limit goes to zero. The limit as t, I guess, yeah, you can plug in zero and you'll see. See, you were banned from plugging in zero to the function because zero is in the denominator. But now there's no denominator. You can plug a zero to that um, particular antiderivative, yeah, with uh, evaluated at that variable. And so you see what's happening there is that the function is shooting off to positive infinity, but you still have a finite area. If you were to paint that area, you would use. Um, the square feet uh, would be, you know, it would be six units squared. Despite the fact that it, the basically the idea is that it's going off to infinity so quickly that it's negligible. Honestly, that's what's going on. Okay, let's look at another example. We have, um, this time the upper limit is the culprit. You integrate from A to B. The upper limit's causing the function to have division by zero. It's not really a place where your function is defined at. Your function is probably shooting up to positive infinity or down to minus infinity at that place. So you replace the upper limit with the variable and let t approach that, um, let that variable approach b. 
the original upper limit, but from the left hand side. Take a look at the interval again, A to B. When you're approaching B, you're approaching from the left. Smaller numbers. Okay. All right, great. So here's our example for this one. 8 minus x is underneath a cube root in the denominator. So when x equals 8, you're going to have division by 0, not allowed. And look at the upper limit. It's an 8. Rip out the 8, put in a t. Let t approach 8 from the left. Okay. So we're talking about having 8 minus x to the 1 third. Oh, no, negative 1 third, sorry. And uh, yeah, I mean, you could do this without a u sub, but it helps. I mean, you, don't, you won't miss a negative, I hope, if you do the u sub. If you let u equal 8 minus x, then du is a negative 1 times dx. So it's like having u to the negative 1 third with the negative 1 out front. Antiderivative of u to the negative 1 third, you add 1 to it, so you get u to the 2 thirds, but you don't divide by 2 thirds, you multiply by 3 halves. But that negative's out front. So your antiderivative is negative 3 halves, the entirety of 8 minus x, who is raised to the 2 thirds. And so our job to put a t in, to put a 0 in. And take the limit as t goes to 8 from numbers that are smaller than 8, 7.99999. When you take that away from 8, okay, you get a very small number, raising it to the two-thirds, it's still small, okay, it's going to go to zero, okay, you can, it can be as small as you want it to be, basically you want to get closer, uh, you tell me what number you want it to be, I can get closer and closer to eight by staying on the, the um, left-hand side of it, and I'll be able to get that number, so that guy is going to go to zero, and then the other part is eight to the two-thirds times three-halves. <clears throat> and so what's going on there is that um, you have 8 to the 1 third, then you square it. So we'll have um, 2 who's squared, so that's a 4. Don't forget that 3 halves on the outside. Now, it's very subtle. Notice it's a plus there because, I mean, technically, actually, it was a minus a minus. You know, our fundamental theorem of calculus had a minus, and then there was this minus who was already in there. So that double minus became a plus. And I think the answer is a 6 again. And the area is here. Same kind of action going on. Whew. Flying off to infinity, but rapidly approaching that asymptote. So much so that it's negligible area up there. And the grand total of the area is 6 units squared. Okay, so that's two examples. I have two more coming, uh, more difficult. And we will... Uh, Tackle those in the next video. All right. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comment down below. Um, reach out to me uh, through my webpage or, um, or my email. And I'll uh, be sure to answer any questions that you have. Um, yeah. I'll see you in the next video. All right. Take care. Oh, wait. Like and subscribe. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.